If you have the icon on your desktop, go and just click on SDS2 2021. If you do not have any jobs in here currently, you'll get the same window that I have here where it is just blank. If you already had jobs in here and it brought open your home screen, all you'll have to do is click your the name of the current job that is open and then you should get the window similar to this. Once you get to this, let's hit new and then we can give it a job name. I'm going to call mine 2021 online training. Going through this window, the first checkbox we have right below our job name is the option to copy job from. If this checkbox is checked, this is going to allow us to select a job at which we would want to copy the job information from. So this would allow us to bring up any job settings from project to project. When we do include the checkbox for copy job from, that is going to allow us or will create a copy of those settings at the time that it is copied. If you make a change in the other project after this has been created, those settings will not automatically apply. It is just a copy created at that point. If copy job from is checked, your fabricator name will come automatically from the previous job. If we are not copying this, we can just come in here and set our fabricator name. We can change this to whatever you would want. In this case, I'm going to leave mine 2021 online training. And we do have the same option to copy our fabricator information as well. Next, we have our units. Do we want to use imperial feet inch fractions, imperial inches sixteenths, imperial inches fraction, imperial inches decimal, or metric, which would be millimeters? What design method are we wanting to use? We can specify the ASD 15th, 14th, 13th, or 9th, LRFD 15th, 14th, 13th, or 3rd, or our CSA 11 or 10. Depending on your license, you may see more or less in that as well. For this training, we are just going to leave that at the ASD 15th. Next is our flavor, which is applying for custom properties. We are not going to worry about that. Next is our approximate number of members. For our approximate number of members, this is going to estimate the approximate number of individual members on the job, not the grouped quantities. We will need to increase our estimated number of members by about 10%. The larger amount specified in here, the more disk space that is allocated, which means the slower the job may run inside of SDS2. If we do not enter enough members, we will get a prompt asking us to change file sizes. So if we do not put enough members in here, we can always go back and make those changes as we would need to. For this, a thousand members is going to be more than enough, so we can leave that at our default number. Next, we have our degrees for job north. If we take a look at this image, we can see zero degrees is going to be north to the top, 90 is going to be north to the left of the screen, 180 is going to be down, and negative 90 is going to be to the right. With this, the degree for the job north is also going to set the direction that face A of the column will be set to be marked for. So whether that's face A is west, face A is east, that is all going to be dependent on our job north. Next, we have our Joyce Manufacturer. We can specify default, Can-Am, or Volcraft. Depending on Can-Am or Volcraft will affect how your shapes file is populated. For the example of this training, we are going to leave this default. And then we're going to take a look at our shape file source. If we are copying our job information from, and we have a specific job, we will have the option to use the source project shapefile, or we can use other shapefile source and browse here. If I select browse, 
we can see that we have options for the AIS seed, all material, it's Australian, Canadian, the European, or USA. In this case, I'm gonna leave mine default. If we take a look here, we can see our default shape files is either USA material, Canadian material, or all material, as we just looked at when we browsed. We can then select that file with material properties, and that is going to be copied then into our local shapes file. That is going to be stored within the project, so that way we can make any adjustments we would need to inside of that and not affect our default or our global setup. If we take a look, it says it copies all the shape file information from a standard global material file. You can use the shape file from the job inside of copy job information as the local. You can use a shape file from another job that you are not copying the job information from to a local job or you can use the default shapefiles and copy that to your local shapefiles. So you do have some different options there. And then the last thing we have is our template source. For the sake of this training, we are not gonna worry about templates, so we're just gonna leave that at the default. And we're gonna go ahead and say okay. And this is gonna create the project and bring us to our home screen.